Chasing cars. One, two, one, two, three, four. There you go everybody, that was Chasing Cars. That was from the uh, Rock School Hot Rock Grade 1 book. And uh, that was a little performance of it that I hope will help you as you learn it. And, I, and I'm going to give you a very quick lesson on it now. This isn't a very thorough lesson, this is just a quick overview. Uh, some hints and tips uh, you might want to think about when you're, when you're studying this piece. You'll be aware that it starts here on the middle two strings, uh, 4 and 3, on fret 7 and fret 9. Something you must be aware of is, since you know that 7 is about to fall down to 6, I would have my left hand ready. Don't start with a th uh, thumb up high like this, and then get caught short. I start with my wrist quite low, in a good guitar position. There's four bars of that, and eventually when I move, down with the first finger is relatively straightforward. I do start with fingers one and four rather than one and three and then being cut short and having to stretch. If you start with one and four and then slide one down with a nice low wrist I think that'll help. Then I go the open D and then back on to the A note. Uh, fourth string, seventh fret. At the end of that little section there is a, a, a crotchet on that last day. You play one and two and three and four you know, like in all pieces, momentum builds up and you get so used to playing, alternating between two notes, you're inclined to keep doing that, but it's not what happens at the very end, it's one and two and three and four. And of course it's very useful, that um, that, cr that crotchet on that A note, because it gives you a chance to jump down to the A chord. That's really quite straightforward, two bars of A, two bars of E, two bars of D. All straight quavers, and I would pluck them all with a downstroke. So the, the chord section, just like the opening section, be very careful you don't rush. Uh, it's so tempting when you have a repeated figure uh, to gradually get faster. Just be very careful, make sure you're really locked into the back and track to keep you nice and tight rhythmically there. You then have the little run all on the fifth string, open, second fret, fourth fret. In the last little section, you're really outlining the, the underlying harmony of an A. That's the fifth fret on the, the the first two strings, which I'll probably pinch with one finger, I think. Those of you who are a little more advanced will understand an A chord. Barred in the fifth fret like that and how that's part of that A chord. I'll then use my little finger, I think, for the seventh fret on the first string. That gives me seventh fret on the first string and fifth fret on the second. That outlines uh, an E chord, an E note and a B note. They're both part, of course, of, of an E chord. And I use fingers one and four. It means uh, one and th it then means finger three is free to pop on here. Seventh fret of the second string, and you can still be pinching fifth fret of the first. Uh, and that outlines a D chord, if you imagine it like that. That's how you're outlining uh, the D chord there. 
to uh, the two notes which outline an A chord. So that's it. I hope that very quick overview hopefully you know give you some help if you're if you're studying for your grade one and you're and you're going to use this piece. The most important thing in this tune I think is not rushing. It's basically continuous quavers the entire tune. Whether you're plucking or strumming or a, a, a two note figure and it's very tempting to rush so I think lots of metronome practice before you put the backing track on and then when you've got the backing track on um, make sure you lock it in really really tight to it. Okay so I hope that helped all the best I'll see you again soon.